That's right, we're going to be able to test coins, rounds, bars, and anything else that you suspect to be a precious metal like gold or silver. Silver Picker here and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now today's video is going to be our next installment in our series on how to determine whether your silver and gold bullion pieces are real or fake. Now today's video is going to be really cool and it does involve a little bit of an art project but it's a lot of fun and if you guys are out there watching and you guys are getting your kids into coin collecting and into bullion investing this is a great way to get them started because it is involving some degree of arts and crafts. But for those of you who are not in arts and crafts, don't worry, it's still really easy. Anyway, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using three different items to build a mechanism that will help test the silver and gold bullion pieces. And what we're going to need is we're going to need a cheap plastic cutting board, we're going to need some neodymium magnets, which are super easy to find on Amazon, you can find them in the links below, and, that's right, a pair of chopsticks. And those three things are going to help us determine whether this American Silver Eagle and a bunch of other coins are real or fake. So let's get right into it and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so here we are. We have all of the different items that we need to build our apparatus that is going to help us determine whether or not these coins we see here are real gold or silver. Now, what we're going to be doing, if you guys haven't already guessed, is we're going to be building a magnetic slide. Now, for those of you who know what a magnetic slide is, you may have seen them online for purchase and you may have decided you wanted one but haven't bought it because they are so freaking expensive when you find them online. They usually cost between like 50 and $80, which to me seems crazy. I mean, you could get a couple ounces of silver for that price. What we have here is we've got a cheap plastic cutting board that I bought for three bucks, a pair of disposable chopsticks that I got with my last sushi order for free, and the only thing that's relatively expensive are these neodymium magnets, which I bought a whole set of, I got a whole bunch of them, and all together they were less than 20 bucks. So for this entire thing we're spending probably like $23, and that is half the price of what you would find elsewhere online. So I'm going to show you how to do it, and we're going to be able to assemble it in like five minutes. So it's really, really easy, and it is an awesome, awesome new test and new skill that you can put in your bag of tricks for when you're determining whether or not a piece of silver or gold bullion is real or fake. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our cutting board and we're going to slide it all the way up so that we can only see the bottom. And we're going to take our neodymium magnets. Now we've got a whole stack of them over here. And we're going to take these neodymium magnets and we're going to line them up from the bottom all the way up to the top and we're going to make a full row. And the way we're going to do this, obviously you've got an individual one, what we're going to do this is we're going to take these 3M double-sided tape pieces that came with these magnets, which is one of the reasons why I really like buying this, it makes it so easy. You have these double-sided tape, we're just going to peel off one side of the double-sided tape, easy, and we're going to affix it to one side of the magnet, just like so. Now this is really strong double-sided tape, so make sure that you do it right the first time because it's going to be difficult to get it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to affix it to the bottom here and we're going to build them up, 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 and up, right? So easy as pie, let's do the rest of them. Okay, so while I was off camera putting these together and putting the tape on the back, I discovered something that is an easy mistake to make and I want to warn you guys about it. So. I put the tape on this one just like the rest, and what happened? It's not letting me put it together because of the poles. So the polarity is messed up, so how is that possible? I'm trying it on all the different angles, etc., and what I realized is that I put it on backwards. So there is a backwards, and now I'm going to have to figure out how to uh, replace this because the tape obviously is not going to work again. So make sure that you line them up first and then put the tape on the back, like this. This is what I've done. I take two of these off, slide them off. It's very, very strong magnets, so they've got these spacers in between. Get rid of the spacers, and then I take this and I find the correct polarity, line them up, and I've been doing two at a time. So I peel these two off together, take two, just like so. 
Easy, very easy. And now we're sure that they're lined up and when we're ready to put the whole thing down, we just take all these back backings off and we can set it up and we're done. So I'm gonna put the rest of these together and we'll get right to it. All right, so we've got our little chain of magnets here and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel off the bat and we're going to adhere it right to the middle of the cutting board lined up with the bottom. All right, so now we've got all of these little stickers off. Get them out of the way. And now we're just going to flip it over and carefully making sure that we are roughly in the middle. I don't need to measure or anything. It's not that important. And voila, we've got ourselves the beginnings of our magnet slide. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to use these chopsticks to make a little runner on the sides so that as we slide coins down this magnet slide, they won't fall off. So the way we're gonna do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of rubber cement and I'm going to lay it down here on the chopstick. You can always add more if you need it. And then we just hold it there for a minute, let it, let it set. And now we do the other side. Now we just hold it for a minute, let it set. And once it's set, leave it for a bit. We'll come back in about 15 minutes and we will have ourselves a magnet slide for testing gold and silver coins. And voila, feast your eyes upon this beautiful silver picker branded, that's right, we fancy, magnetic slide for testing precious metals. That's right, we're gonna be able to test coins, rounds, bars, and anything else that you suspect to be a precious metal like gold or silver. So I'm gonna show you with all these different coins and bars that we have around here, many of which you recognize as ones that I bought from that infamous Chinese website, wish.com, which we already know to be fake, but I'll show you how some fakes are really easy to detect and others are actually really, really hard to tell unless you know what to look for. So let's start testing some of these. I'll show you how it works and follow along if you've made one yourself. So what you do is you basically just pick this up and you hold it at an angle. And the idea is we're going to be taking coins and sliding them down the magnets to see what kind of resistance it shows. Now I'll show you a good example of what a coin that has no magnetic properties whatsoever. Now remember, silver is not magnetic, but it does have some magnetic properties because of its conductivity. So we're gonna take this coin, it's a 25 cent piece from Bermuda, it was sent to me by a fan, really, really nice coin, and it is not silver, it is cupro-nickel, which means it is a combination of copper and nickel. So what we're gonna do first to illustrate what this slide does is we're going to slide the coin down the plastic part. Right, slide it down the plastic, shoots down like a rocket. Zero resistance whatsoever, just the normal friction that you'd expect when sliding something down a surface. However, when we do it on the magnet portion, you'll see that even though it slides down, there's some degree of resistance. It's going a little bit slower, and that is due to the coin's copper content. Copper, like silver and gold, has a high conductivity, which means that it will have some sort of pseudo-magnetic properties that will let it slow down when the poles of the magnets pull on it. So what we do, again, take a look, fast, still fast but slightly slower, and that should show you what a non-silver but still somewhat conductive coin will look like when it goes down a, a, a slide. Now, what I wanna show you is I wanna show you how this looks with a real silver coin. This is a real Morgan silver dollar. I know it to be real because I've tested it in multiple ways and it is absolutely authentic. So again, let's do it on the side without the magnets. Shoots down like a rocket, right? Shoots down as fast as it can be. Now let's do it on here. Like molasses, like molasses. You see that? You can see the difference. Do it again with this guy, fast, slow. And you'd think that because of this size, the weight would make it go even faster. So that should show you exactly how serious the conductivity and the sort of pseudo-magnetic properties that the silver coins have. Now that tells you that this coin really is silver. Now again, if the coin is actually magnetic and it adheres to the magnets, 
then that's bad. That means it's not silver. So for example, we take a look at fake American Silver Eagle and we can tell because we can't even do the slide test. Watch. There's no slide test because it is actually truly magnetic, which means that it is not even silver at all. Man, that's hard to even get off. So we know that that's junk. Now when we take a look, can put that here, we'll take a look at a real American Silver Eagle. You can see similar, similar properties with the Morgan. Maybe even more so because it is slightly more silver. It's actually, uh, instead of 90% silver, it's 99.9% .9 silver. So it goes even slower. Now, of course, you can see, not magnetic at all, but it does have those magnetic properties. Very, very cool, right? It's almost like magic. It's honestly almost like a magic trick. All right, so I've lined up the two that we know are silver over here and the two that we know are not silver over here. And I've stacked up these other coins and bars to see which ones are and which ones are not silver. So let's go through it. So you can even do it with a case on, which is really good because you don't want to scratch up your coins sometimes. It's if you really do want to, you can put like a piece of felt over this to make sure that you're protected. So we've got ourselves this one tri ounce of silver. It's an angle hard bar, shall we? Well, what do you guys think? That is right, this is absolutely not silver. It is magnetic, not magnetic properties. This is straight up magnetic, so we know that this is fake. Put this with the fake guys. Now, here's where it gets tricky. I am going to show you a fake Morgan Silver dollar. One that I know for a fact to be fake. It is this 1888 supposed Carson City Morgan dollar. Now, why is it going to be a tough one and why is it going to be confusing? Well, watch. That's right. Do you see that it goes slowly down, right? If you did this on its own, you would say, wow, this thing is silver. It's not magnetic. It's the right size, it seems. So it must be silver. That's why you need to practice this, and that is the big danger of these slides. So what I've done is I've set up a little rig, I've put some books behind it so that I can use both hands. It's tough to film and do this at the same time. But what I wanna do is I wanna illustrate a really big danger when using these slides. Online, if you go to buy a slide, it makes it seem like it's this amazing definitive test that will tell you whether or not your coins are silver immediately and with ease. Now, it's not entirely untrue. It is a good test, and that is why I'm making a video about it, because it is a worthwhile thing, like I said, to throw into your bag of tricks along with your other tests and your other skills. But you have to really, really know what you're doing in order not to screw this up. And the reason is because we have these two Morgan Silver dollars. One is real, one is fake. This one's real, this one's fake. Now watch. Without knowing what the real one looks like, you slide this down, and you assume that it's real because there is all that resistance, right? You're like, look, it's resistant. Perfect. Now you do the same one. You do the other one. This is the real one. Now to me, I can tell that that's going much, much slower. I can tell that this is slower because I've done this a million times and I'm familiar with the test. But to the untrained eye, without this as a reference, you would watch this and you would say, oh, that looks real. And I'm gonna illustrate the difference by showing you that I can race the coins and you'll see that the real one always will finish last. Watch. If I put the real one on first and then immediately I put the fake one on, right? Theoretically, they should go down at the same rate and never touch, right? So I'm gonna put this here, let it go, and drop the other one. You can see that it immediately catches up and touches this, right? So again, I put the real one on, let it go, Put the second one on, it catches right up with it. Now if we do it the other way, where I put the fake one on first, and then the real one, it never catches up. And that's because it's going at a slower rate, and that's because it is made of real silver, which has a much stronger conductivity than whatever this fake one is made out of, which is likely that it has a copper core and some kind of either uh, nickel or some other kind of coating on the outside. So watch again. The real, one goes, the, the real one goes first, fake one catches up with it right away. Fake one goes first, and the real one will never catch up with it because it's going at a slower pace. 
So that is why you really need to know what you're doing. This is not something that is uh, just a, a mechanical object that will tell you the answer right away. It's not a computer. It's something that you need to really understand and learn the nuance. So again, same thing here, right? All of these fake coins to an untrained user, they would seem real. Right? All those go slowly and it's because they probably have some kind of copper core. Now this one's actually going too slowly and that's because there's actually some degree of magnetic property to it. It's actually adhering very lightly. So it might have some kind of like steel coating. Um, so this one is, is a really bad one. We've got our Kruderand, which is actually just straight up magnetic. So we know that that's fake. And then we have this here. This is a real Canadian maple leaf. And this is absolutely real. You can see how slowly it goes like molasses, just like that real American Silver Eagle went. So now you guys know how to build and use a magnet slide to test gold and silver bullion. But just to reiterate the key points, because I want to make sure you really understand this so that you don't end up making a bad deal and buying some fake bullion, the important things to remember are one, gold and silver are not actually magnetic. They will never stick to a magnet. If you have a piece of gold or silver that sticks to a magnet in the traditional sense, don't buy it, it's fake. However, because of their charges and because of the polarity of the magnets, a gold and silver piece will have some sort of pseudo-magnetic properties that we saw when we slide one of these magnets down the slide. It won't adhere, but it will slow the coin down. So it's important to see that the piece of, of metal that you're testing does indeed do that, unlike this coin, which sort of just slides down quickly. But the final and third most important point is that because copper and some other metals have a high conductivity as well, they will also go much slower down this slide than regular coins made out of, say, nickel, but not quite as slow as coins made of silver. So that's why it's important to take a piece of silver that you know to be silver. So for example, with our, with our Morgan dollars, see how fast a real Morgan dollar goes, like that, and then when you test a Morgan that you're about to buy and want to test to make sure that it's really silver, you can send it down again and compare the two. So again, you use this in conjunction with the other tests. Use this in addition to measuring the weight, the diameter, and the height of the coin. Use this in addition to the ping test. Use all of these in order to triangulate your way into determining whether a piece of, whether a piece of bullion is actually real or fake. So I really hope you guys learned something from this video and I hope you guys take this out into the field and I hope that it prevents you guys from buying fake gold and silver coins, bars, etc. So if you liked this video and found it useful, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Come join us in the Silver Picker Squad where we learn about gold, silver, coins, thrifting, picking, personal finance, and just different ways to make an extra buck on your own terms. So I hope you enjoyed the show. We got a lot more great stuff coming down the pike. So until next time, thanks for watching and Silver Picker out.